Hello and welcome back to the Arts Bar podcast. We have not done this in a while. I think the last one we did was just after lockdown um, and we have been very busy since. So Yeah, it's a, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we chatted on a podcast? It's been a while. I mean, I think it got us through lockdown a little bit. Like It was a bit of therapy, really, wasn't it? It wasn't <laughs> yeah. like, um, it wasn't really a podcast. Um, it was just a way for us to express how we'd been feeling. Cooped and up and in have a bit of a laugh flat. as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Good. Uh, since we're in the pub, I've got us a pint. Cheers. Cheers, Jen. Now people are going to comment on the heads of these. They've been sat here for a while. It's just <laughs> terrible lager, guys. Wilson's in charge of that element of the business, so take out on him. I'll do better. I'll <laughs> do better. <laughs> um, listen, man. I, what have we done since the last time we did a podcast? Should we, should we start from coming out of... When was the actual last podcast? Have you, have you looked into that? Yeah, it was. Um, about four weeks became, before we came out of lockdown. And we did like a special on... Um, I think we, we, we had the open mic and then we did a bit of a special on some local artists. And we did a silly one about going to Russia or something. South, <laughs> South Korea was in there as well, South wasn't it? Yeah. And a Taskmaster one, which was good fun. That was good. Um, yeah, I didn't realise. I thought we may maybe carried it on, but I think I think maybe opening up again to the world, maybe life got we got swallowed up a little bit in yeah. terms of um, you know getting back to normality of running a venue. Um, and I do feel like I've to, we talk about this all the time that when we did reopen, I think we felt the effects of how much we had with the likes of the podcast and the Facebook lives and different events we did through uh, lockdown, we actually felt the effects of more people come in because they'd seen us for a year online. Um, so maybe we didn't have time to do a podcast again after that because it was just a busy bar. Yeah, I think we definitely noticed a spike and what was nice was people that were coming in that bought the merch and stuff. Yep. Over. I actually got sent a picture last, last week. Shout out to Andy Roberts, a, a fan favourite. Uh, he sent me a picture of his dad in Malta on holiday in a crisp white Arts Bar t-shirt that must, they looked freshly ironed and he looked so tanned in his white t-shirt in Malta but it was nice to see it's funny isn't it to see people walk, I remember walking through town one week and um, someone had a tote bag an Arts Bar tote bag walking down the street and my mum was walking through, she was shopping and she nudged me like that's weird isn't it and I was like yeah it's weird but it's I nice. remember when we first had the Art Society and one of the uh, jumpers had it, like that monkey logo on the back with a top hat on yeah. and we'd, we'd kind of sold them at an event and we were walking down Church Street and uh, saw someone with it and, and someone said do you know them and went oh no never met them before it was a cool design that do you remember it, that it was good yeah remember we um, we pitched that to a friend didn't we and said we want the logo to be or not even not the logo but like the image that sort of represents it is a monkey with a top hat and a monocle on and yeah. she did pretty bob on drawing Very of well, it yeah. didn't she yeah um, but yeah, it's been a while since we've been uh, in front of a camera and on a microphone and loads has happened. Um, and we're trying this setup in, in the new space. Yeah. So we're going to try it out, see if, it, see if it's must, might, must be a nicer view than our living rooms if yeah. it's the last time you tuned into the podcast. But yeah, loads has happened. Um, I feel like we came back from lockdown really strong and um, opened loads of, well, obviously opened new rooms in Hope Street. Um, we took the new floors on and put studios in um, and offices and they've become a pretty like a seriously important part of our business model now in terms of um, that, that second floor of studios is really really good quality dance studios theatre rehearsal rooms band practice rooms and some creative offices something we try and grow each each week um, and let, let's just kind of make a... For, for those that don't know, because a lot of people have just been into the actual bar up at Hope Street. Yeah. Um, we'll mention where we are in a minute. We'll, talk, we'll tell this story in a sec. But the original Hope Street venue, um, a lot of people have just been in the bar. Now, when we first took over the bar, it was just that. It was, it was the bar. We had, we had a stage side. We had a lounge side. We had a library. And the building is a, a, huge. And at the time, was kind of like 
70 percent in use i think there was there was quite a lot of rooms that were just unused or they, they didn't need it no. and we have gradually grown so do you want to explain like the other spaces that we've managed to take on and, and i suppose what they're being used for now yeah it's funny isn't it when you when you talk to people a lot of people go like oh, i didn't realize it's more than just this ground floor bar um but basically the front of the building that we're in uh, on hope street is you've got uh loads of like empty spaces that weren't being used um like old meeting rooms um stock rooms and storage spaces and stuff like that which we obviously used when we first opened for sort of stock rooms and cellar spaces and things like that downstairs um and then we managed to take on more space upstairs so we've managed to in the basement put in like a 30 seater black box studio which is going to be perfect for sort of poetry reading script in hand theatre stuff stand up comedy uh, that sort of things there's band practice rooms down there there's office spaces and then on the second floor we put in two massive dance studios equipped with like the correct flooring and lighting and mirrored walls and stuff like that then we put in some office spaces, sort of shared office spaces for community groups and theatre companies to use, to call their home. Some more band practice spaces. Uh, and then now we're looking at taking another space on that we're going to put some art studios in, sort of, sort of like cubicle spaces for artists to use. And then the top floor is like a 60-seater um, fringe-style venue, which can be ticketed uh, for music, theatre, film screenings and things like that. And it was just something that when we first started the arts bar it was something that we we always wanted to have we, we started this company by having rehearsal spaces um, and we used to rent out the rehearsal space to generate some cash flow to put on events and projects in different spaces um, we've always thought entrepreneurially about what we do but we are creatives um, so it was always about trying to generate cash flow to try and start new projects and we started with rehearsal spaces so it was always a we have to make sure we come back to that rehearsal space thing so putting that whole floor of rehearsal studios in was huge for me because it took us right back to our roots of how we'd started the company and stuff like that um, and i mean literally uh, you and jb in particular had a hard time oh my god i think it shaved five years <laughs> off my life definitely it's, we sanded these floors down that we we basically took a floor on um with two big like i said two big dance studios that we were going to get like bespoke flooring put in, like um, laminate flooring or uh, rubber dance floor. And we had this guy come and have a look, and to be fair to him, quite sound of what he did, was he pulled the carpet up in a corner to see what was underneath the carpet. And the carpet had been glued to a like perfect bamboo dance floor. And he said, the, these rooms used to be dance halls. So if you're putting dance studios in here, that you need to use that floor. You can't get me to put laminate over the top of that it'd be horrendous and there was like parquet flooring through the hallways it was gorgeous but it, everything had been carpeted for some reason i don't Thick know why blue horrible carpet um so we pulled the carpet up and me and jb decided we were going to do the job ourselves and we sanded them down um and varnished them buffed them um but yeah i've lost five years off my life but they look lovely so if you're in them and you use them uh, just thank me next time you're in i'll have a, a pint of whatever <laughs> wilson's got me can you believe it's bamboo? Like, I was just like... It's gorgeous, isn't it? Lovely floors. But yeah, we put, we stripped them back, stay, sanded them, stained them. And then one of them, we did put a, like a rubber flooring down on over the top of it, just because we wanted to have two different types of, of studio. Um, but they're so good, aren't they, as an asset to sort of the venue and, and sort of the, the whole model of what Arts Bar is, is that come here and rehearse, come here and discuss new ideas with new people, use the studios to try out the new ideas and then use the spaces that are available to, to put them on and try them out and then take them on to bigger spaces and we're proud to be there to sort of showcase grassroots stuff and hopefully the new ideas can start over a pint at the bar, then go up to the rehearsal studios next week and then weeks later they can go into the venues that can be used. There's something quite nice about them being uh, like slightly secret i think when you go upstairs and you see how much of the building isn't being used you just can't believe that you you walk down down hope street every day for years and you just don't know they exist so what's been nice is actually opening up that to people that have never seen it before yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we'd never seen it before yeah. i remember the first time we walked into the building and like it had that strange like smell of kind of old churches yeah 
and it was very cold and dark and quiet and then to see that now to walk in and see the color and the life and people using it for dance and art and music yeah it's 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 quite exciting really isn't it it's it's completely different to when we saw the building in 2018 it's that whole like i think we've sort of stumbled across that but i think we're quite passionate about now that we wouldn't just go and get like a new build yeah. unit and put our venue in that like glass fronted new do you know what i mean that someone's someone's built a new building and there's a big glass front on it and it's like we, we, I don't think that suits us as a venue, and I think what's actually worked is that like listed old building full of character that's sort of gone by the wayside a little bit, but we can come in and fill it with colour and lights and music and bring it back to life a little bit. And I think we're actually, like, we've fallen upon it. We, I don't think we ever set out to go, like, oh, we're only going to take on listed buildings. We, I think we've fallen upon it, but got quite passionate about yeah. we can bring this building back to life with, with art. And I suppose that probably brings us on to yeah. where we're sat now. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, the light behind us, if it's not blinding you, is it says Baltic. Um, so many of you will know that we took the, the Baltic on a year ago, just over a year ago. Yeah, we'd seen that uh, the Baltic Social, which was quite a favourite bar, and actually, like, the area now is quite developed. But at the time, it was the only thing really down here that, was a, a gathering space for people to meet and greet and eat. Yeah, and yeah. All that like kind a, of stuff. Like a hub, and it was, if anyone knows the area well, it's a, it's like a famously creative area of the city, um, really unique spot in Liverpool. Um, and the Baltic Social did such an amazing job over the years of being that hub for the, all the creative companies in the area to come and sort of as a watering hole for them and to eat and eat and drink um, we used to come didn't we because Rowan had a space upstairs yeah Rowan of VIP puppets shout out uh, and it, it was odd wasn't it we, I think we saw it on Facebook that um, the, the social was going I think they'd come to the end of the lease I think both the, the owners had separate projects that they were passionate about and doing and just decided that it was time to, to kind of wrap it up and we came down half being nosy and half kind of going that I suppose in the back of our minds, always going, eventually we are going to want to expand what we do. Yeah. I don't think any of us wanted to ever really do it in Liverpool because we were scared that it would take business away from the other one yeah. or, you know, we couldn't manage it in the same city. And when we walked in, I, I just remember thinking, it just feels right, man. Yeah. Like, it, you know, it, it had gone through a lot of periods of, like, turmoil. You've got lockdown, you've got financial crisis and... And, and someone coming to the end of their kind of time with it. But you could still see some life in it, even though it was empty. They moved the furniture out, nothing was here. And actually, it was it, for us, it was like, no, do you know what? This feels right and, yeah. and, and feels nice. I remember we were kind of half trying to vince, convince the landlords that we were the right fit for the building. We didn't really have a pass that they could kind of... Uh, yeah, we didn't really have a track record in terms of as, as an operator in, yeah. in hospitality. There's obviously people in the city that have owned bars and restaurants for, for years and um, or different businesses, whether it wasn't going to be a hospitality unit uh, and it was going to be a big corp that come in and um, took over the, the space, but we didn't really have a track record. We had, a, we had a, a year, then closed for 18 months, then back open for a year maybe. Um, and then that was our, we, we didn't really have figures and things like that to yeah. show them, did we? That we're, it was more a sort of story that we could tell and, um, and where we wanted to go and why we wanted to do it um, and pitch that across. And, and the day that we were with the kind of building owners, Cert Property, Manchester-based, but we're coming over here and have occupied this building now and bought this building. Those that know it, there's an elevator that goes up to lots of recording studios and band rehearsal rooms. Uh, some of the biggest bands in the city are up there now. And luckily, the day that we were getting shown around, I remember people coming out of lift going, all right, lads, all right, lads. It was, it was very much like, what are you doing here, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. We knew so everyone that got out of the lift, sort of like musicians and artists and stuff like that, we knew them. Um, and they were like, what are you guys doing here? And uh, we got a lot of messages. I remember getting home that night and we had a lot of texts and missed phone calls. Like, are you guys taking on the Baltic unit? Um, and it just felt right after that, didn't it? In terms of like, yeah, we felt like we fit into that area. I've done a lot of talking recently in terms of go and do talks in, in universities and things like that and talked about how 
uh, we can now like we sort of break in the business up into uh, building blocks or Lego blocks um, and it being like a hospitality unit if you looked at Hope Street you'd say the ground floor is a hospitality unit the basement is um, an office and studio space spaces above it you've got more studio spaces and band practice rooms and they're little blocks that add to that one massive thing and then there's a top floor there's a big venue that's ticketed so they're all individual blocks that make that one big building Whereas here, I feel like we are just one block that slots perfectly into an ecosystem and a build, a building and then an area that is suits us down to a T. Um, and we just fit nicely in this area. And I felt like that day, I definitely felt like, yeah, we, we, need, to, we need to take a jump on this. 100%. And I, we've been here a year now. Yeah, I, I, I literally, I know, I know it's a bit cliche, but when it was our kind of first birthday a few weeks ago, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And you've, you have seen it grow a lot. I think some of the old pictures that we took when we were doing the place up, you, you realise how far it's come. And actually, that is that is a lot to do with how it gets used. Yeah. Because we had this idea, we, you know, I think part of our new policy about doing podcasts and interviews is we're going to be honest about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And... You know, if we if this kind of builds again and everyone anyone's got any questions, send them over and we'll kind of answer them as honest as possible because we've never run a business before, we've never really done any of the kind of handiwork that we were required to do, and we've never really had like. JB famously says that he's never bought a tool in his <laughs> life, <laughs> but has a full toolbox of tools. Um, but he says he's never ever bought a tool. No. But I mean, if you were to say to him, "Can I just have a quick look in your toolbox there?" It's full of all sorts. An angle grinder turned up off Amazon the other day. So all right, I so mean, he has. That's the first one. The He's a changed man, guys. <laughs> 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 now he buys tools. Yeah. But I think I think we didn't. We really underestimated some kind of some aspects of it, and then have been surprised by others. So I think we had an idea of it being a lot quicker and easier to do up a place. And actually, I think we blew the budget in about three days. Yeah, man. Oh. And then I think it, what's funny is, right, so Wilson, like Wilson said, we're going to do this and we want to be really honest about, um, you know, it, it's, it, we've set a business up at the end of the day and none of us really had any experience. And the first venue to open in Hope Street, we did Hope Street on a budget of like £210 and it was a really bespoke way of starting our first business and we actually like subletted it first and then ended up buying it. Um, but it was done like... It w we went to watch Porto in the Champions League and told the guy that owned the bar when we'd had about 12 pints each. 12? It was a lot of pints. Mum, eight. A lot of eight pints. Eight maximum. Liverpool knocked, knocked Porto out of the Champions League and we were out all for, for the night. And we decided, whilst we were hammered, to say, we could open a bar and we'd do this and this is the concept we'd have. In it. And then the next day... He turned up and put it on us, and we ended up running with an idea, and that's that's where we are now. But we genuinely opened that on a budget of about two hundred pound, didn't we? And we begged, borrowed, and stealed, and everyone came to help us, and families, and, and George's dad bought us uniform the day we were opening. We were just going to open in our own clothes and stuff, and his dad turned up and was like, "I've got your logo printed on a t-shirt." And Tommy, Tommy, your mate, Tommy, I'm <laughs> yeah, I found a window cleaner on the street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just paid him and said, Come "I've on got clean a, him. one of my best mates lives in Vietnam." Tom Armfield, if you tuned into this, you always get a shout out wherever I'm doing a yeah, talk somewhere. Does, yeah. um, he was changing jobs. He was moving to Vietnam from Germany, and he came home for a week. And instead of seeing his family, he spent the full week in Liverpool and he buffed the hell out of a, of a copper bar. And he just kept saying to me every day, he's from Blackpool, Al, if you don't get them, you need to get them bloody windows cleaned, you know, mate. I was like, no, they'll be all right, they'll be all right. And the windows were, yeah. And then the next day when we turned up, the fellow was washing our windows, wasn't he? And he'd gone out on the street and found a window cleaner to come and do our windows. But like mates, mates helped out, mates lent us stuff and furniture and stuff like that. The girlfriends were there every yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Just absolutely hating their Mums lives. Mums and dads. But yeah, cleaning, cleaning and scrubbing and what, polishing and painting. sawing and painting yeah. and everything. But that was done on like an, a zero budget. And then when we opened the Baltic, it was done in a proper way where we'd gone and got bank loans and um, 
it's a lot of money to open a, a bar and to rip, rip a venue out and kit it out how you want and buy all the stuff and everything that you come in and see, like the lighting, the sound, the, the furniture, it all costs loads of money. And we, we, we put a business plan together. We got like uh, a, loan, a loan sort of idea together of how much we wanted to borrow. And then we actually ended up borrowing half the amount that we, we'd budgeted to open a venue. Yeah. And then spent the money yeah. like it was the normal budget, didn't we? So I remember getting like two weeks into it and going, oh God, this money's gone. Um, and then we just had to graft, didn't we? And we found our way around it. And like with Hope Street, it's grown day by day. You come in and I think people appreciate that. They come in and go, stuff changes every week when you come in here. Like there's new lights or there's new... Um, furniture and or you change the layout and you've done this and I think we're just constantly trying to evolve the space but that also comes with like oh we've run out of money so let's do this for now and then we'll put all the money aside and then we'll buy this and we'll use that and it's just the way we work which to some people who are watching who are business minded might be totally scatty but it works for us it does work I think I wouldn't really change much that we've done I think we added an element down at the Baltic site with like food, so we we've started doing. We've got a kitchen down here now, and actually, currently as we speak, we're looking out over the over the the seating area, and people are eating, and the kitchen's running. You can hear kind of the hustle and bustle, and that's something that we've never experienced. And look, it took a while to get right, and we're still working on it. Yep. Uh, um, we just it needs to. It's not just a restaurant, and it's not just a gig venue, it's not just a bar, and it's not just a coffee shop. It's trying to be all everything to everyone but still maintain that element of we're here to support artists and it's a safe space to come and work and play and gig and experiment um i think plays that plays the important word there isn't it in terms of like like play with play on stage play live gigs and stuff like that but also play with with your friends and your partners and come and enjoy yourself like that's the whole point yeah. is like to actually use the space whether that be coming at 10 a.m and having a coffee and having your laptop out or meeting a friend whether that be coming for lunch or coming for cocktails or coming to watch a gig or coming to be in a gig like everything is about enjoying the space for what it is and what you use the space for and you might use it for totally different reasons but it is hard trying to do like the f food coffee Drinks. I don't know many venues in the city that open at 10 a.m. and close at 2 a.m. and try and cater for. We know that there's a we know that there's a group of people that are artists that want a space to come early in the morning and get their laptops out and have a coffee and have something to eat in the at lunchtime. We also know that there's a group of people that want to come at five o'clock when they finish work and have pints or cocktails and listen to cool music and meet friends, meet their creative friends after they've finished their their muggle jobs, as people say. Where their normal jobs and then they, they come out and go to band practice or improv or theatre rehearsals and things like that. And then there's a group that want to come at 8 o'clock and go to gigs or perform at gigs and stuff like that. And that runs right through the night and people stay and have cocktails and food and stuff like that. So, yeah, it is it is tough, isn't it, trying to do the 10 a.m. till 2 a.m.? It, it is, and, and the more that we've grown, the harder it's got in terms of we aren't just on the bar anymore, so it'd be us four and a couple of members of staff on the bar every day. One, we're getting too old to do so that. So old. So I'm it, aching every day <laughs> now. It's weird. Two, it's not practical, and it's not kind of... We needed to look at that in terms of staffing as well. So actually having... We've got about 30-odd members of staff now, and like they bring that to the team, so... Having, having them bringing, bringing stuff in, so bringing ideas in, the majority of them are in creative, either courses at university or jobs post-university. Yeah. So we've got a mixture of actors, dancers, musicians, writers, um, it, I, I, and they, they bring that extra element that we yeah. need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been really important to, to kind of get right. It's funny going from like, when we first opened, it was just the, the four of us, and then there was some team members we'd inherited from the, the, the previous venue um, and then mates wasn't it, it was like mates helping us on, on certain nights but like it was just us four and we inherited the team from the previous venue who were all quality yeah and, and there's one that's still with us now yeah. from that from that first the first ever day um, everyone's sort of like she's moved away through the ranks and you'll know who she is Tia Jackson she's now the manager she runs it but she was there from day one 
Um, and everyone else has sort of gone on to, they were studying at university and they've gone on to do different jobs. And, but like at, at the very, very start, it was the four of us and like three, four other people. Um, and now it is very bizarre to sort of go step away from it and actually you're not really involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the bar and stuff like that. You're just sort of overseeing, um, overseeing those operations and forward planning and doing the projects like putting the new studio spaces in, uh, enhancing the experience in the venues and stuff like that and running events. So like, it's totally different, isn't it, to, yeah. what, to what it was? Yeah. Um, I think that leads me on to kind of a couple of things that I wanted to get started with this podcast. I think this will be slightly less structured than the rest of them because uh, I, I just felt like we had to do a bit of an introduction again to the kind of where we're at. Yeah. And I think that has wrapped it up quite nicely. But just reflectively, I was wondering what, what your... We went out for a bit of food the other night, didn't we? It was and our five-year anniversary. Yeah. So we went, went for a bit of a meal and a bit of a catch-up. The other thing about having more than one place is we don't see each other as much as we used to do. You spread out. We try and do like two, two of us in one venue, two of us in another venue um, each day, isn't it? So We try and have Sundays off. <laughs> yeah. We try and split ourselves like two in one venue, two in the other venue all week. Um, so it's not very often now that all four of us are together at the same time, isn't it? And it's funny, like one Monday we had a meeting, didn't we? And uh, regulars came in and was like, all four of you, well, this doesn't happen. I was like, I know, no. So people do notice that, that yeah. don't see the four of us together anymore. But um, well, obviously we talk all day over the phone and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was nice to go for food, just the it was four good. of us. It was good. Out. And it, we, we, you, we can get a bit stuck on certain things. You can get stuck on like, your budgets and your events. Yeah, and things that are winding you up probably like come up a lot more, don't they, than the things that are... That are good. Yeah. 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 And the question that I thought was quite interesting was, look, what, what's been y your favourite? I think what Wilson's getting at there was we were bickering over <laughs> something really, really, really rubbish. Like, wasn't even... I can't even remember. It wasn't it was. even a thing, but the four of us were bickering. Maybe Wilson less so, but... We're sitting, waiting for our food, bickering over something stupid. Yeah. And he left, went to the toilet, and when he came back, he just went, right, guys, what's your favourite moment of the last five and years? Because he was just trying to get us to stop having this stupid chat that we in were fairness, having. that's not usually me either. No, it's <laughs> not well you. It's not bickering. usually you. Um, but he did do a good job of stopping us having this stupid argument. Um, but I, I, we had, we, I think we didn't really answer that question very well at the time. Probably because we'd had like four cocktails and ten pints again. Yeah. N sorry, mum, two pints, and we we were, we were celebrating. But what what is your favourite moment or moment or anything really? Like, what's the what's the the perks of your, the job now that you're doing, and like what makes you happy about it? Perks? No, I think that's two. Yeah. Is it two part a question? Maybe, though, maybe. Um, I always talk about, and obviously we haven't done the podcast since lockdown, so. I hate going back to lockdown. I hate going like, oh, after lockdown or... I hate COVID. saying the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but so significant in where we are, like what and happened and to us. And business yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I remember coming back after lockdown and you'd started your, your band and it was like the first... It was Obviously, when we come back after lockdown, there was loads of restrictions and like four to a take. There's those stupid rules when they're like, you had to order food to have a drink. You had to sit outside. Yeah. I think we're going to look back in like 20 years and go, what, a, what on earth was going on there? Like, you had to sit outside, then you had to go inside, but you could only order food. You could have a cider with a, with a full roast dinner. Um, then it was four to a table yeah. and no swapping tables. And, and then they just went, all right, go Very back well. to normal then. So it was the first time it had been like, right, no restrictions anymore, enjoy yourselves. And we had this night where your band played... Um, I think I'd been to like a wedding the night before and I'd come back, the band were playing and everyone was dancing and singing and hugging each other and stuff like that. And I was dead emotional, probably one, because of the wedding, <laughs> two drinks, and three, it was like, I didn't think this was gonna happen again. And we'd done, we'd had nine months of like, wow, this is a dream. And then we shut completely. And then we come back and there was loads of restrictions. And I remember this night where the band were playing, people were singing and hugging and stuff like that. And I thought, I didn't know if we were going to see this again in this venue. Like, I didn't know if, you know, culture had changed and things like that. But it was unreal to see, like, everyone is 
crying out for like togetherness and music and uh, enjoying themselves. And it was that was like I go back to that night a lot and go like, yeah, yeah, we're on again now. Like, let's go. And I think we kicked on from those nights. Yeah, yeah. Mine's kind of similar in in terms of I I absolutely love them nights when the band are fired up, everyone's having a drink, everyone's like happy, and it kind of leads on to an unexpected one for me where. You, you kind of live in people's like life memories as well so like yeah we're a venue but you might have like weddings and funerals and christenings and engagements and birthdays and the it more, and that, more we it? do it the more people go we had our engagement party here and we've been married five years and i remember being here and actually that like, that's what a pub or a public house or whatever is it's a place that people go and congregate and celebrate yeah. stuff and that's a, that's a, a strange one for me because I don't think I'd ever really thought about it as that. Yeah. It is mad that people people celebrate. Like, I remember, if you look back on those early days, when someone came in that we didn't recognize, I remember genuinely going like, oh, do you know Tom? Or do you know Jordan? And people would be like, what are you on about? What are you on about? I'm just, can you get me a pint? And you'd be like, oh, right, you just come in because it's a pub and you want to come to the pub. All right. And then they become regulars and... They still drink with us now, and you look back at those first days where you're like, "What made them people come in that first day?" Like, I get it if we were mates, and you, that's why you came in. But then there's it was some, like, "All right, this works." Some proper good old school regulars in there. Unreal, mate. Like, that we still see. Just Ian and Harry. Just quality. people thought they were my auntie and uncle, but they weren't, mate. They're just are legends. They <laughs> legends of the game. Just Ian and Harry, and the Scottons. The Scottons. The Scottons had their daughter's wedding. And it was the first wedding we ever held, and I think we've only held three or four. Yeah. And it was unreal to see someone use the space for, for a wedding, and just because it was their it was their regular and like it, it was their local. That's where they wanted it. Um, yeah. And they're people that aren't linked to like the theatre world and the stuff we've done previously with like music and theatre. They're people that have just stumbled across the bar. I think they, they've got a bit of a route around Hope Street. They might do on a Friday yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. And we've just become part of that routine yeah and we just become a, a place they went every week yeah to become part of someone's like friday night pub crawl is like quality yeah it? yeah <laughs> it's, it's really, unreal it's really and it, cool. and yeah you're right that it's, it is crazy that people it it becomes a celebratory spot for people yeah. and i i laugh like so I, I do all the interviewing process for like when we bring new team members in um so like and one of my first questions when i have an interview with people is have you been to the venue before and that, and that isn't like a trip you up question in like you won't get the job if you don't drink in here. That is like a do I have to do I have to explain to you what what the venue like what the venue is or do you know the venue? And nine times out of ten, people who've applied for the job of us are they're all artists, creatives, dancers, actors. Um, so like they nine times out of ten they go yeah yeah I come in all the time I've gigged here before I've done this this. We've just taken on a new assistant manager in Hope Street called Holly. And I remember my f my interview with her. She was like, yeah, yeah, I had my birthday here two years ago. And I was like, you had your birthday? I, don't, I didn't know her or anything like that. And then she didn't know any of us four, but she'd, she was like, I just think it's really cool and a cool vibe in here and I wanted to have my birthday. And I was like, that's mad that... But I didn't know that when no, I'd interviewed her. I don't know. I didn't know that till just now. Yeah, yeah. But it is amazing when you ask people that question. and Oh, yeah, I've come here for someone's birthday or someone got engaged or such and such as wedding yeah. and that is amazing that people use it to celebrate it's beautiful and i think that was an added benefit of it that i would never thought about and um, i think if we're going to look at it the other way um because we are trying to just be a bit more open about everything that we do i think like what what are you struggling with or what have you struggled with or some of the low points and let's avoid that word COVID. again let's just avoid that we're avoiding covid we're avoiding that mate um, Cause uh, do you want me to go? I'll, I'll go first this time. So, for me, it's the pressure of having to look after lots of people now. Yep. Now, if we had a really bad week um, back in the day, and it was just us four that suffered, that's fine, and we could kind of take that on the chin. I think this is not even a bad thing actually. What it does is it spurs you on to do better. It's the fact that we are, we're looking after so many people, often quite young people that are working to fund their course at uni. And the fact that we've suddenly been put in charge of all these people and, and that's how they pay their bills and eat the food. Yeah, that hit you hard when I remember someone said. Yeah, it proper did. We had two, two people who were team members, didn't we? And um, love the bones of both of them. Um, live and flow. 
uh, who were our partners, but both worked in either venue. And didn't they say something like, "You pay, you pay our rent or something yeah, like that"? And I was like, they both obviously shit. both worked in both venues. And Wilson had this like minor panic attack about if something was to happen to either venues, then what would happen to them too? Because they both their incomes was this place, and so it, you had a real panic attack terrifying. about what would happen to those people. But you care, like we, you care, and the, the people, everyone, people who work here become family and you want to yeah. make sure that everyone's okay and and that that it's funny isn't it when people leave in the past so like there's nothing i love more and this sounds really hard it's probably goodwill hunting this there's in there a speech in goodwill hunting where he says something like um there's nothing i want more every day to turn up to your door and you're not here yeah. so like you you've gone on to bigger and better things like you're better than this town type thing why are you still here and I, I proper think of it like that, where people come and say, oh, I've been offered this uh, acting job, or I've been offered a cruise job for a dance job, or um, I've got a TV show that I'm going to go and do and stuff like that. There's nothing I love more than when people who, who work here, who are actors, musicians, dancers, filmmakers, fashion designers, things like that, who come and go, oh, I'm going to have to leave because I've been offered this. And they're gutted because they love working here. But I'm absolutely made up, and yeah. it's that conversation, isn't it? Of like, don't be upset. That's what you're not supposed to be here forever. This yeah. is supposed to be a thing that supports you whilst you're trying to achieve your dreams. Yeah. And when you go and get that job, we're the first people to be to be buzzing for you. Yeah. It's not an issue at all. We've all done it for so long, man. We've done hospitality for so long that that is the way that it goes. But what we're trying to do, to the best of our abilities, is look after them while they're here, and like. That's what scares me when you're like, and it's not even like no fair it's enough. financial, mate. It's it, it's literally financial, and whether that's just a sign of the times, whether it'll get better potentially in the next couple of years, fingers crossed. Don't you just, really made, know a, if you just made a political statement there, yeah, didn't you? Like yeah, under well, underhanded political statement. It was. Slightly, I thought yeah. we weren't revealing our political <laughs> agenda on this no, show. No, listen. Whether it will or not, there's been a change of government. It's going to ruffle a few feathers. Yeah, there's going to be change. Um. No, you're right. You're right. It is. A, it is. There's a lot of people to look after. Yeah. Which when you know when it was just looking after the four of us. And n n negotiating your way around how to actually structure and run a business is something that's just like mental. That I don't know why they don't teach you at school. So no, like well, that, for example. That's it, isn't it? They don't teach you at school because they want only want the select few to know. God, it's got deep and political. Yeah, he's got political <laughs> again. He got um, political again. No, you're right. It's it's it is daunting, but it's also a challenge. I think we relish and we we like the we we we're really really keen to grow as a as a company. And um, it's been interesting finding out, hasn't it? And usually we find out the hard way where we just get stung God. with something. But I think we've got a bit more of a handle on it now. Yeah, and I do feel like we have got a bit of knowledge to give to people. So I remember having a conversation with one of the people that work for us, I can't remember who it was, talking about council tax and talking about kind of really minute, boring stuff, but actually I felt like a bit of a dad in terms of like, I had a few, a few like answers, I was like, I feel old as hell now, but I actually feel like I've yeah. learned a bit it's good. about business in general, it's good. it wasn't about council we're tax. Also, we're also in our 30s, we're not 25, 26 anymore, Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have, we have grown, I feel like ourselves and with what we've done and we've learned things and met new people and I think we've been very good at um, we don't know how to do that let's learn how to do that and also we don't know how to do that let's go and find someone who's really good at doing that that's what we've got better at yeah we've got better at trying to go if we don't know how to do something let's not just dive in let's go seek some advice and or get someone to help us uh, it doesn't always work out that way but yeah they, we're trying more and more to do that it's got significantly louder in here. I don't know whether that's going to come through on the podcast, yeah, guys. Maybe. But I tell you what, it's we'll nice. Do, right? It's a really busy like vibe with people eating and drinking, and there's no music on tonight, but there's a cool little vibe in here. It's very nice. But whether you can hear it coming through on the podcast, I'm not sure, guys. But Wilson will sort that in the post. I'll try. Um, or he'll make it sound like it's dead busy yeah. and it's actually <laughs> empty. Just whoa, whoa, <laughs> God. Um, I think what I'm going to do there is I did have a bit of a section about what's coming up and what we've done this week. I think. What I'm about my biggest? What about oh my God, biggest? Yeah. Sorry, God. sorry. Uh, nothing actually. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Oh, um, wait, what, what's the thing that's been... Is that, is that Mickey Pickles? It's Mickey come Pickles. Here. Just come and give a wave to this little camera here. Just, just, wave, at, just wave at this. this oh, it's the famous Mickey Pickles. The famous Mickey Pickles. Oh, we're Pickles. over there. We got all right. What's going on? Have I ever like, have I surprised yeah, guest yeah. on the first <laughs> podcast? <laughs> nice, nice. What do we, we see? Yeah, what are we talking about? Uh, um, yeah. talking go, go, five years, mate. <laughs> oh, well, well. Five years. We're oh, talking about, we haven't done it before, like three years. We're talking about yeah. coming back and opening this and at where we are now. And then we're going to dive into like some of the sessions and stuff, the Arts by Live stuff. But. Spicy stuff. <laughs> Spicy stuff. I like it. Hey, we'll come and have a pint with you in a minute. I will come and have a pint. Yeah, sounds. Right. Listen, it's fucking sick. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, back to my biggest worries in life. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. What um, are you impressed about? Yeah, God. Um, biggest, I think. Like, what was it? What's the question? Worst? Do you know what? It's it, for me. It's like. What's what the actual the, question? Let me read it. What I wrote was, what's the biggest, biggest challenge, challenge you faced? But it didn't feel right because. I think we know, we've kind of covered some of that. So I just wanted to, I want to, it's all that thing I try to open up a bit more. We're so good at spinning everything to a positive. And you don't need to be negative. No, no, no. But it just I needs to be what's actually fucking well hard sometimes. What people, um, I've got like a funny story about when we opened here. I think I spent every day, 12 hours a day, every day, from the day we signed on the dotted line for about... 16 weeks, maybe longer, 12 hours a day, every single day, in here, stripping stripping the floor, painting, like building things, building the bar, writing a menu, all those types of things. I think it was like, ev- it was it was non-stop, wasn't it? And, um, and I remember it opening and then it opened and you think, oh, I'll have a bit of a breather now because actually like we've built it now and it, it'll run. And then it was like, oh no, actually, there's, you don't stop now. You've got to get it open and make sure it's busy and if market anything, it and put the events on and put the f- make sure the food's right and make sure the business is running properly. And actually, like I thought, the 12-hour non-stop days would stop the day that the doors opened, and it didn't. No. And it carried on. And I remember, it, like, say there's a there's six weeks a month of us being open a month six weeks of us being open here, and then it was like right, take the Saturday, go away for the Saturday, so like leave it. I remember having a day off, going for tea with Sienna. And like in my head, I hated it because I'd been here every day for 12, 12 hours a day for 16 weeks. What's that Stockholm syndrome? Yeah, <laughs> but I'd been here every day and I was yeah. like, I, I didn't like it. Do you know what I mean? Like in my head, I was like, it's not cool. It's not working. Why is it not working? It's not like Hope Street. It's, and I, I like, and people would come and go like, oh, it's different to Hope Street, isn't it? And I, I used to be like, oh, why are people saying that to me? And, and I remember going, getting home that day and Sienna was like, let's go for tea. And we went to the Baltic market for tea and we had something to eat and we walked back and we were walking home and there was hustle and bustle outside and we'd walk past a few places and it wasn't really like, it wasn't busy, the area. Um, in the Baltic, it can be mad, can't it? Some Saturdays can be like, chaos and some Saturdays can just be like a ghost town and it's just like whether that's like week before payday weekend or whatever and because it's a very like it's an area where local people like where people from the area come out and people from Liverpool come the Baltic it's not really like a a touristy or studenty area Um, and it everywhere else was sort of like okay and then it was we were busy outside and I was like what's going on Sienna was like let's go in for a drink and I was like no I want to go home, I don't want to go in. And she dragged me in. It's like, we're going in for a drink. And we came in, there was a band on, we got a cocktail, we sat down at a high table. And it was the first time that I'd not come in and been working and had my work head on. And, and I just sat and had a cocktail and enjoyed it. And the vibe was unreal. And the people in here were like loving it. The lights were cool, the music, the band were great. And I remember then just having this switch of like, ah, oh, it is cool. I've just been looking at it the same way yeah. every day and oh but if we change this this and this then this will work and then actually coming back at it the next day with like a fresh pair of eyes and being like oh i looked at it as a customer last night not as a 
not as like being here all day. And in some ways, being doing the work on it, and and just again, pretty much being us four for like six yeah, weeks, yeah, yeah. you. you you forget about everything else it's almost easier in many ways because you've got a real set project deadline finish we need to paint that we need to sand that we need to get that delivered whereas when you're open it's not as clear cut it's as you kind of adapt into how people use the space yep. when we first opened we thought we'd do better on the food than we did and it didn't so that went really badly and I don't think we'd prepared ourselves no. for plan B and it took us a load of scram- scrabbling around. Now, luckily, like now, you've sorted that. And your dad, Frankie Meds, has absolutely come and saved that side of the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that can be said for like a lot of it. You know, sound systems, equipment, events that don't work on certain nights might work on other nights. Yeah. It's so much harder because there isn't a definitive, that needs painting, I'm going to paint it and it'll take me six hours. Yeah. That's easy to like compartmentalize. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when we came out of that real practical measurement world, we had to go back into the world of uh, theories and concepts and artistic decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why we all got a little bit... And then also, you're knackered. Yeah. Then you're doing launch parties where you probably drink too much. Then you're doing, like, seven days a week, 12-hour shifts. I think that's it. I think, like, it's funny, isn't it? You think, like, it opens, the team are in place... You don't, you've built it. Right, you're finished now. Like, have, have a bit of a rest. Then you're like, no, actually, it's well harder now than yeah. it is. Like, the, the, the painting, the sanding, the building. The we do always say we're going to go into bitter. We're going to go on tools, aren't we? If this all fails, if anyone's hiring, man, we could do everything for you. We'll get it sorted. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> Let's get on the tools, man. Uh, right. And we're going to do some stuff about the events. I think let's leave it there. I think that was a really good introduction back, man. And I think it's been good to kind of talk about it properly. Yeah. Because I don't think we ever really... Therapy again. Do. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back in therapy. It's nice. So we've got the Just need Ben to pop up with like, I can do happy poop on the screen again. If anyone remembers that. The issue is we haven't got them two here to annoy them. Yeah. We don't know each other no. that much online. We just get a deep and political. Yeah. Um, I think what we're going to try and do with this is we're going to introduce you to everything that we see in the world. So we're going to try and record every single gig that we do, every art exhibition, every tap dance night, everything. And we're going to try and, as best we can, stick it on social media, YouTube, podcast, Instagram, and really open you up to the world in which we live in because it is a mental world, but it's full of amazing things. It is. And it's for, like, anything can happen. Like, you could walk in here any night and anything could happen. You could walk into a full tap dance session to a live band. Is, it could be a paint class. It could be a single launch of the new artist that you've never heard of, but they go on to be massive. It could be a DJ battle. It could be a film screening. Anything. You could walk in and anything's happening. So we want you guys to see that, um, and hopefully you love it. And yeah, we want to be honest with you. We want to invite some hospitality and some creative friends on and get them to talk about honestly about what they're doing and how they've come to what they're doing and their journey. And hopefully it helps. Yeah. If there's anyone that's made it this far into the podcast and you want to come <laughs> and... <laughs> I'd have gone. My, my, like, honestly, my concentration, I'd have been gone yeah. three minutes in. Yeah, you, Brian, on the train to Reading. Um, <laughs> If you do want to come and chat with us, I think our thing is about trying to talk about a hospitality business, creative business, creative endeavors, even if you're a musician. Uh, we want to get to know people and, and kind of have an honest approach to what we do and try and open up a little bit, um, as well as showing you all the fun shit that we do. So that's the next six months to a year are going to be us attempting to meet once a week. Yeah. And watch out, Stephen Bartlett. Yeah, we've got you, mate. <laughs> But for now, thanks for listening, if you're still here. Yeah. And you know what we didn't do at the start? Just in case you don't know. This is Tom. Oh, yeah. And I'm Alex. (laughs) And we're from the Arts Bar. (laughs) See you, guys. Thank you.